No washing machines were used in the making of this video. Welcome back to the Scale Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. Today we're doing a tutorial on how to take better scale truck photography photos. And I've got a list of tips here and some how to's to show you how to take the best photos of your tiny trucks, regardless of the location or the type of camera or hardware you might have. And on that note, the first thing I want to mention is that you do not need to have an expensive, fancy digital SLR style camera. If you've got an iPhone or an Android phone and it's semi-modern, it's got a great enough camera built into it to take some really great photos. The processing power and the lenses and all of the technology that are built into these cell phones can result in some pretty amazing photography. And it just goes to show you that the best camera to have is the one that's already with you. For me, one of the most important things is the setting that the truck is in. What's your background? What's in your foreground? Are there any ways that you could hide some objects that might make it feel as if it is a toy? Try to shoot in an area with sort of a generic background or a nice landscape or a really long city view. You don't want to get really close to objects because that really does kind of defeat the purpose and uh, kind of spoil the effect. And for the purposes of this demo, I'm shooting most of these things in my backyard. Sure, I've got a couple of big rocks that I've built, but uh, this can work in pretty much any environment. The angle from which you're taking these photos is really important. And one thing that I cannot stress enough, get as low as possible. I want that camera pretty much on the ground. Think about it like this. If you were a photographer and you were the same size as the tiny truck that you're filming, you would never be shooting it from above. You'd always be shooting it at basic eye level to the truck. So you want to get that camera lens nice and low on the ground. And as you can see in this demo here, I'm crouching as low as possible and I've got my camera almost nearly on the ground. These trucks look a lot better when they're shot from an appropriate angle. So make sure that you're always as low as possible. Even actually sometimes looking up or pointing the camera up at a vehicle can really help sell the idea that this is a full size truck. I think a lot of these photos benefit from having a driver in the truck as well. It always seems a little strange to me when I see a photo of a truck with no driver in it. And uh, you know, driving the truck uh, is sort of important. Also, it makes it seem like somebody else took the photo. So there's that too. Always make sure to think about light. Where is the sun when you're shooting? Is it directly above you? Is it behind you? Is it in front of you? Those are all things to take into account when taking a photograph. If the sun's behind you, you've got probably your shadow in the way. You can work around that and adjust your angle a little bit so that shadow isn't going to affect the actual subject. If the light is in front of you, the truck will be casting its own shadow and then it won't get properly exposed in the foreground. I always try to stress not using a flash. A flash tends to really kind of overexpose details and doesn't look very realistic. In fact, I rarely use a flash at all. Cameras these days are really excellent at using uh, most available light to create really stunning, beautiful photos, even in low light situations. If you feel you do need to add a little bit of light, there's two great ways you can do that. A small portable LED light like the one I'm using here, or a nice big white piece of bristol board to help bounce that light around a little bit. If the sun's in, a, in an area of the sky that isn't really complementing the actual setting of your photo, you can use a nice big bounce like that to kind of angle some of that light towards the truck, light it up, get it a lot better exposure. To add to the realism of these photos, I really like having a foreground element that's sort of blocking a bit of the lens at the front to really give it some depth and to make it feel like you actually are a photographer that small, maybe sitting behind a rock or something, getting a bit of the elements of the foreground in front of the lens. It really adds a lot to the realism and is super easy to achieve. A few really well-placed branches can make it look like there's actually a bunch of trees in front of your truck. And that really adds a lot of cool realism and is one of my favorite tips. A couple of advanced ideas I like to fiddle around with. Atmosphere. What is going on in the actual photo that can really add some realism? I like using this great tool called Atmosphere Aerosol. This is an actual misting agent that you can spray into the air and underneath objects to make it seem like there's a bit of mystery or smoke or mist happening in a scene. It's a really great way to add another little bit of realism and can really increase the drama of your photographs. 
There's also a lot of post-processing you can do in photo editing software like Lightroom or Aperture or uh, any number of apps even on your phone. Uh, they can really add a lot of realism and color correction is a huge thing and actually so big that I think we may actually do a live video on how to edit photos in Lightroom. It's a really great way to add some really cool effects and definitely something that I think you guys would be interested in seeing. If that's something you are interested in seeing, post a comment down below. I think it would be great to do a combination live stream where we go over editing some photos and I'd actually like to see your scale photography as well. So we'll definitely consider doing that and if that's something you're interested in, post a comment down below. And if you're enjoying and finding this video informative, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild. And one final technique that I haven't had a lot of experience with but I have seen some really great examples of is forced perspective. That's where you actually raise the vehicle up off the ground, build a diorama of the ground in the area in which you're shooting, and shoot that. Having that extra bit of angle will really make the truck look real. It's something that I've found uh, in use a lot in static models, and there's no reason we can't scale it up and use it in tiny trucks as well. I'll be sure to post some links down below to some examples of forced perspective so you get a better idea of what I'm talking about. Because without me actually doing it, how am I helping you? So there you go, some very simple tips to make much better scale photographs. And I hope that I've shown you that these simple tips can really up your photography game. These are uh, really ex excellent techniques. And uh, if you've got any other techniques that you think might need to be covered and I haven't done here, by all means, post them down below. I love getting your feedback and I try to answer as many of them as I can. So I think that's gonna do it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon.